OK, so we're going to have a look at a fun problem to do with rotating graphs of functions. So if you imagine you've got the graph of a nice function here, y equals x squared, we can rotate this 90 degrees anti-clockwise, then you can see this new rotated curve is no longer the graph of a well-defined function. You've got this one-to-many sort of behaviour, so for some of your inputs there, you'd have to have multiple outputs. So this is not the graph of a well-defined function after this rotation. But it's interesting, you can see if we rotate a further 90 degrees, you've now got y equals minus x squared, and this is the graph of a well-defined function. And here at the bottom we've got another example where you can see that this isn't the graph of a well-defined function. You've got some inputs with multiple potential outputs there. So the question that we're going to try and answer is, for this graph y equals x squared, which rotations give us the graph of a well-defined function? Which ones don't? So the first thing that we'll do to try and get a handle on the problem is we need to have a nice way of actually rotating this curve by any, just sort of, any angle. So how I'm going to get a handle on this is actually by introducing complex numbers. So basically I'm going to parameterize our curve using this variable t in the complex plane. So here, if you imagine your real part, t, this goes with your x. So instead of having an x value, you've got a real value. And then there's also the imaginary part is t squared. So this is equal to your, like how y is equal to x squared. Your t squared is your imaginary part. So the set of all these points for t in the reals if you draw this in the complex plane, you'll get the exact same curve as what we have in the xy plane here. And if you want to rotate something in the complex plane, this is really nice, you want to rotate by theta radians anti-clockwise, you just multiply by e to the i theta. So this is kind of why I've introduced complex numbers here to give us this nice sort of framework. So you've got t plus t squared i. If you rotate this by i radians anti-clockwise, sorry, theta radians anti-clockwise, then you can see this is basically what it's going to look like. And what we'll do is to find out what our new x and y coordinates are going to be after doing this rotation. We'll take this e to the i theta out of the exponential form, we'll find the real and imaginary parts. So they'll give us our new x and y coordinates. So when we expand this, we get t plus t squared i multiplied now by cos theta plus i sine theta. Then we expand the brackets, taking real and imaginary parts here, you get t cos theta and then it's minus t squared sine theta as your real part now, so this is our new x-coordinate. Then we also have, I'll put this in brackets, for our imaginary parts we're going to have t sine theta plus t squared cos theta all multiplied by i. So this gives us our new y-coordinate, our new imaginary part. Okay, so if we wanted to actually solve this problem of when does our graph turn into something that is a well-defined function, the kind of behaviour that we're looking for is this one-to-many or many, one-to-many kind of behaviour where let's imagine you've got one x value but then it has to have two potential outputs. So for one input you've got multiple outputs, this means it can't be a function. And it looks just sort of drawing a generic rotation of a parabola. It seems like actually there should be perhaps even infinitely many points like this. So it's not looking very promising that we'll get a function other than perhaps in this row of pi radians here. So what we'll do is basically we're looking for what does this look like in terms of our t parameterization? We're looking for t1 and t2, so two distinct real numbers, such that basically they've got the same x coordinate, but they've got a different y coordinate. So in order for their x coordinate to be the same, you want t1 cos theta minus t1 squared sine theta to be equal to t2 cos theta minus t2 squared sine theta. So we want to have the same x-coordinate, but then we want to have a different kind of y-coordinate, a different imaginary part here. So now we're looking for t1 sine theta plus t1 squared cos theta. We want this to be not equal to t2 sine theta plus t2 squared cos theta. So we can find two points like this for each theta, then we'll be able to prove that this rotation doesn't give us a well-defined function. We'll have this one-to-many kind of behaviour. So because we've seen from the sketches that it looks like there's actually going to be a lot of freedom, a lot of choice that we could take for our t1 and t2, what we're going to do is to make life much easier for ourselves with the algebras, we'll just set t1 equal to zero and we'll see if that works. And I'll say here at this point as well, we're going to exclude those cases that we've dealt with in the beginning. So you know that if you rotate by zero or pi radians, you get y equals x squared or y equals minus x squared, both of which give you the graph of a well-defined function. 
We've also seen for the pi over 2 radian and the 3 pi over 2 radian rotation that neither of these give the graph of a well-defined function. So these were the square root x kind of behaviour. OK, so setting t1 equal to 0, what we'll do now is we're trying to look for a suitable t2 that will go with this so that we have another point with the same x-coordinate but a new y-coordinate, so the same real part but a different imaginary part. So the real part of the x-coordinate is just going to be 0 when t1 is equal to 0. So to find our t2, we need the real part for our t2 to also be equal to 0. So you need t2 cos theta minus t2 squared sine theta to be equal to 0. So all we need to do is just solve this equation for our sort of fixed value of theta, and then we should find a suitable t2 that depends on theta. So solving this, we get t2 squared sine theta is equal to t2 cos theta. And here we're hoping that t2 isn't going to be equal to 0, because otherwise we'd have the same point. So we can divide by t2 to get t2 sine theta is equal to cos theta. And then here we'll divide by sine theta. And this is actually fine because we've excluded theta equals 0 and theta equals pi. So we get t2 is now equal to cos theta divided by sine theta, or cot theta. And here it's interesting, you can know that cot theta, this is equal to 0 exactly when theta is pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So these two cases are actually excluded. So we have indeed got a different value of t here. I think this is quite interesting because the case where t1 is equal to t2 is equal to 0, this corresponds to where your vertical line would actually be tangent to your curve at 0 like this. So you would only have one value. So what we need to do now with this t2 value is we need to check that basically for our t1, the y value, the imaginary part, we need to check that we do indeed have a different imaginary part, a different y value. So you can see that when t1 is equal to 0, t1 sine theta plus t1 squared cos theta, this is going to be equal to 0. So our y coordinate or imaginary part for this point is going to be 0. So what we want to do now is for this different point t2 equals cot theta, if we substitute in t2 equals cot theta, we want to show hopefully that this y coordinate isn't equal to 0, the imaginary part isn't 0 so that we have indeed got a distinct point which has got the same kind of input. So we've got one input with two potential outputs. So writing t2 as cot theta, what we'll do is write cot theta sine theta plus cot squared theta cos theta. And to show that this isn't equal to zero, what I'm going to do is write it as a product of several different terms. So we take out a factor of cot theta here, and in brackets we've got sine theta plus cot theta cos theta. And we'll just show that each of the individual terms in the product is not equal to zero. So what we'll do next is we'll write the cot theta inside the bracket here just as an extra cos square, cos divided by sine theta. So you get cos squared theta divided by sine theta. Okay, and now let's actually take out a factor of 1 over sine theta. So you get cot theta multiplied by 1 over sine theta. Then what have we got now inside the brackets? We've got sine squared theta plus cos squared theta. So let's just check each of these pieces. So certainly within this range, we know that cot theta, this isn't equal to 0. And you know that 1 over sine theta, there's no way this is going to be equal to 0. And finally, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta, we know that this is actually going to be equal to 1. So the product of these three things, there's no way this is going to be equal to 0. Okay, so what have we shown here? Well, we've shown that for this different value of t2, we've got a different y value, so a different output for the same input. So pictorially, what we've done is we've shown, starting with our point at 0, we've got a line vertically above it, giving us another point, or potentially below, and we've got two different outputs for the same input. So this means, basically, whenever we rotate, unless we rotate using 0 or pi, we've already shown that pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2 don't work. So for any other values of theta, this rotation isn't going to give us the graph of a well-defined function. And just to finish off as well, I'll talk about some different ways we could have attacked this problem. So we could have done the rotation actually using matrices and avoided using complex numbers. All of the algebra would be very much the same. There's another quite a nice way of looking at this is, let's imagine we've got our vertical line going with the rotated graph. Well, what does this picture look like when we go back to the original parabola? Well, our vertical line just gets rotated back theta degrees clockwise now. So let's say maybe it looks like this once we've rotated it back. So what you could actually do is start with a vertical line, rotate it by theta radians clockwise now, and then try and move this up and down in such a way that hopefully this line will intersect your curve in two different points. And this would show then that that rotation of theta anti-clockwise doesn't give you 
the graph of a well-defined function, you'd still have this one-to-many kind of behaviour, just to give you another way of attacking this sort of problem.